So last night at a massive rally in Phoenix, President Trump unloaded on the liberal mainstream media, the establishment media, and for good reason. He called out their lies, their propaganda, their agenda, and the fact that they are now just an arm of the radical leftist movement that is in this country. Watch the president from last night. It's time to expose the crooked media deceptions and to challenge the media for their role in fomenting divisions. These are sick people. You know the thing I don't understand? You would think, you would think they'd want to make our country great again. And I honestly believe they don't. If you want to discover the source of the division in our country, look no further than the fake news and the crooked media. You know, the president's right. You would think they want to make America great again. You know what? Do they ever talk about solutions to solve the problems this country is facing? We'll get to that later. Now, predictably, after President Trump fought back in a big way, well, it sent the lazy, overpaid, radical, ideologically driven media into a frenzy. For example, here is how fake news CNN reacted. Take a look at this. What we have witnessed was a total eclipse of the facts. Someone who came out on stage and lied directly to the American people. He's unhinged. It's embarrassing. His speech was without thought. It was without reason. It was devoid of facts. It was devoid of wisdom. There was no gravitas. There was no sanity there. But he has given oxygen to racists. He is clearly trying to ignite a civil war in this country. It was an astounding chain of lies tied together by lunatic asides by a man who obviously is mentally unstable. That is not sane behavior. I am not a psychiatrist. I am just a regular human being who knows a lot of people yeah. and who knows the difference between right and wrong, okay. which is more than this 71-year-old man baby seems to be able to know. That the only defensible excuse, the only defensible explanation is if he is not mentally well. Actually, CNN is unhinged and embarrassing. Really, Don? Civil war? Now, the president, he's right. The media is stirring up severe tensions in this country, and this is exactly why crowds at the Trump rally, like we saw last night, hey, Don, hey, Jeff Zucker, they were chanting at you. Take a listen. Yeah, CNN sucks. You know what? Have you guys ever thought that maybe those people, maybe they're sending you a message? Hey, Jeff Zucker, CNN, you're the head of CNN. Are you proud of the lies, the garbage that is being spewed on your network day in and day out, hour in, hour out? Because guess what, Jeff? You own this rhetoric. You own the lies that your network tells. Now, up next is the deranged conspiracy theory spreading fake news leftist ideologues over at MSNBC. Take a look. It is a unique situation to have a president go out to the American public like this on live television and live lie this way. Members um, publicly, privately are acknowledging that this guy is a basket case, that he cannot serve, he cannot lead the party. He, in fact, in, in his heart, does stand with white supremacists. It's a rhetorical disaster, not only for this country and also the political discourse, but also, even though he just will never understand it, his long-term political health. It is deeply um, disturbing and offensive the way, he, the way he, he spoke of the media, but what Donald Trump speech is not deeply uh, disturbing and offensive. Sadly predictable and unbelievable. Hey, Andy Lack, you're the head of NBC. You now own every one of these conspiracy theories, all the lies that are told on your network. Up next, we have the big three broadcast networks. Let's take a look at how they handled this. Mr. Trump was unrestrained, lashing out in a tirade that started with a call for unity. I've covered a lot of President Trump's rallies, and I don't think I've ever seen him this angry. What does it mean that the president is essentially committing fratricide, screaming <laughs> obscenities at the Senate Majority Leader, and then bashing two Republican senators in their own home state? Well, George, this was incitement, plain and simple. The president said that journalists take this country. That's what he told this crowd. This was an assault that went on and on and on. And, George, I've got to tell you, this one felt different. It really feels like a matter of time, frankly, before someone gets hurt. It, it, it is just shocking that this is happening with an occupant in the White House. 
Now, try and put yourself in the position of the president. If you were unfairly lied about, if you were called a racist, one of the worst things you can say about somebody, you know you're not. You have a history of not being racist. You've spoken out against racism your whole life. Wouldn't you feel a need to defend yourself, your honor, your reputation, your character, your family? Well, the destroy Trump media, they are beyond pathetic. And they deserve now every bit of criticism that they're getting from the president and rational thinking Americans. And finally, there's President Obama's former director of national intelligence, James Clapper. He's now pushing a new tin foil hat, black helicopter conspiracy theory about President Trump's fitness for office. Now, listen to this nonsense and then we'll remind you about him because he's a known liar. Take a listen. I don't know when I've listened and watched something like this from a president that I found more uh, disturbing. I really question uh, his uh, ability to, uh, his fitness to be in this office. Having some understanding of, of the, uh, the levers that a president can exercise, um, I worry about, frankly, uh, uh, you know, the uh, access to nuclear codes. Really? Now, let me see if I remember correctly. Isn't that the same James Clapper who lied about surveillance to Congress, who originally said he saw zero evidence of so-called Trump-Russia collusion? Well, he's since changed his tune. Well, I don't know. I guess that's what you have to do if you want to get a job over at the fake news network, the Clinton News Network these days. Let's see. A liar on CNN. Sounds like a perfect match in heaven to me. But here's the bigger point. To the leftist media, everything is President Trump's fault. You know what? He can't say or do anything in their eyes that is right. Here's what I came to the conclusion after last night. If President Trump could actually cure cancer, make people in wheelchairs walk, give every American a million dollars, if he could prevent heart attacks or stop car accidents, well, guess what? The media still wouldn't be happy. They still wouldn't be satisfied. And by the way, if the dog bites the beast things and you're feeling sad, it's Donald Trump's fault in their eyes. Now, somehow the media thinks that President Trump, that he wasn't supposed to respond to them calling a racist and a bigot every hour of every day. So here's a little reminder of just some of the things the media has said about the president just the past two weeks before last night's rally, which caused the president to respond. Why is President Trump showing sympathy for white nationalists and other hate groups? One editorial board of a big paper this morning calling the president America's bigot in chief. He's now given safe harbor to Nazis to white supremacists. He's so disgraced, not just the Republican Party, but the country. Donald Trump, short of only maybe Woodrow Wilson and Andrew Jackson, is being himself more than any other previous president with disgraceful racial views. That's the truth. He's not pandering to people. These are his views. I think people now realize that this strain of white nationalism uh, in the White House is in fact uh, something that is more closely associated with the president himself. Barack Obama was a black president. Maybe he didn't think that Barack Obama was fit to be in office. He, he traded on racial animus and racial BS, and he's been doing it for decades. Anyone who is in that White House and who is supporting him is complicit in their racism as well. It was disturbing, Don. I, you know, I think we saw the president's true colors today, and, and I'm not sure they were red, white, and blue. We can surely say his words have absolutely emboldened white supremacists. You know, this is a, it's a tough night. Um, I think for normal people, you got a lot of people at home uh, going through Kleenex right now. I'm just hurt. I'm sitting here hurt. And I think a lot of people are hurt tonight. So as the president pointed out last night, when it comes to Charlottesville, academic hatred and racism and bigotry, well, the destroy Trump media, they have distorted and misrepresented everything that he has said. They've also neglected to mention the many numerous times he has condemned outright the likes of David Duke, the KKK, neo-Nazis, and white supremacists. So because the media refuses to report the facts and do their job, let's go through them one by one and show every example of the president doing this, highlighting all the examples. Now, we're going to make it so simple and easy for members of the abusively biased press to follow along. We're going to do this. Listen, hear that? Okay, we'll start with the tragedy in Charlottesville. Now, on Saturday, August the 12th, the day it happened, before a madman plowed his car into a group of people, the president tweeted out the following. We all must be united and condemn 
All that hate stands for, there's no place for this kind of violence in America. Let's come together as one. Now, then the president went on to say, we must remember this truth. No matter our color, creed, religion, or political party, we're all Americans first. And after the protest turned deadly, President Trump immediately came out. He condemned the hatred. Take a look yourself. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. Now, the media went ballistic because President Trump, he dared to tell the truth, and the video proves it. The white supremacists, we all know this, they deserve the blame for starting the violence. And by the way, the revulsion most people feel when they see people like that is natural and normal. And these people should be condemned in the strongest possible terms, which President Trump did. But of course, that was not good enough for the destroy Trump media. So that Monday, President Trump, he came out again and condemned all of these hate groups. And yes, he did it by name. Watch this. Racism is evil. And those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. And the very next day, President Trump, he denounced again these hate groups. Take a look for yourself. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. I've condemned neo-Nazis. I've condemned many different groups. Now, for the leftist press, President Trump's remarks still, they weren't enough. They weren't said well enough. Instead of acknowledging and accepting the numerous times that the president rightly spoke out against these despicable, disgusting white supremacists, well, the media, they tried to use this for political purposes and bludgeon the president and all conservatives and all Republicans, just like they do every two and four years, as I approved again and again right here on this show. They also completely ignored the president's decades-long history of denouncing bigots, racists like David Duke, and it goes all the way back to 1991. Donald Trump, he was on CNN's Larry King Live. All CNN had to do was dig up the tape and show it to you and be fair and balanced and, and do their jobs and be diligent in their work. But of course, they won't do that. There's also countless video examples of President Trump rebuking David Duke and these hate groups. So-called journalists, maybe you can learn something. Pay close attention. Words matter. What are your views on the Ku Klux Klan and white supremacists? I totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. I've been doing it now for two weeks. This is you're probably about the 18th person that's asked me the question. I didn't even know he endorsed me. David Duke endorsed me? Okay. All right. I disavow. David Duke announced his Senate candidacy claiming your agenda for his own, or essentially saying, glad that you spoke out. Are you ready before you ask the question? Newt Gingrich said, every Republican should repudiate this guy I no do. matter what it takes. And I do. Rebuked. Is that okay? Rebuke. Rebuke. Done. I disavow him every time I speak to somebody virtually, and, uh, you know, they just keep it going. They keep it going. How would you characterize, in more words than one, uh, David Duke? Uh, David Duke is a bad person who I disavowed on numerous occasions over the years. I disavowed him. I disavowed the KKK. I just did the Today Show, and it was the same thing. And I said, how many times do I have to disavow? Do you want me to do it again for the 12th time? Well, I want to so on the record disavowed. on this. How many times do I have to reject? I've reject David Duke, rejected David Duke. Uh, I've rejected the uh, KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. From the time I'm five years old, I rejected them. What do you see as the biggest problem with the Reform Party right now? Well, you've got David Duke just joined. A bigot, a racist, a problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. That was back to 1991, the year 2000. Hey, ask yourself this question tonight. Why does the media refuse to show you all the examples of the president repudiating vile, divisive people, white supremacists, and other racist groups? The answer is simple. They are agenda-driven. They are radical left-wing ideologues. They are hell-bent on destroying this presidency, the presidency of Donald Trump. 
Now, we saw it way back during the campaign. Remember, just about every major media news outlet, except the Fox News Channel, was caught red-handed. What were they doing? Colluding with the Clinton campaign. And we've also seen it with the media, their nonstop tinfoil hat, black helicopter conspiracy theories, consistently negative coverage of this president. He can do nothing right in their eyes. You may remember this Harvard study. It shows over 90% of, of the Clinton News Network, fake news, NBC, CBS, their coverage of the president was negative. The media cannot handle the fact that they are now being exposed, as they were last night, as agenda-driven and fake news. They think they can lie. They think they can call conservatives, Republicans, and the president racist, bigots, homophobes, Islamophobes, sexist, xenophobic, Islamophobic. They think they can push conspiracy theories about Russian collusion for months on end with no concrete evidence and not be called out and not be exposed. Well, tonight the media's credibility is now gone. They are nothing but propaganda outlets for leftist ideology. They are all basically a bunch of sheep who echo each other, they got their own little echo chamber, they feign moral outrage every chance they can get. They create fake crisis, fake crisis after fake crisis using fake news. And of course, sources that are not identified, anonymous sources. It's gone from Russia, 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 to President Trump going to launch a nuclear war with North Korea, to, oh my gosh, racist, racist, racist. Now they've all been exposed. And here's the saddest part of all of this. They do not care about the forgotten men and women in this country who are desperately needing solutions that voted for this president. This is a duly elected president that they want to push out of office. They are not trying to help solve this country's problems, to help the millions of Americans suffering. They don't tell the truth about what's really going on in America. Now, besides this show, how often do you hear about 50 million Americans in poverty? 50 million Americans on food stamps. By the way, 13 million more Americans on food stamps after Obama. 8 million more in poverty after Obama. 95 million Americans out of the labor force. Did they mention a million new jobs since Donald Trump's been elected president? They had the lowest labor participation rate since the 1970s. Now we have the best labor participation rate in years. We had the worst rec economic recovery since the 40s. The lowest home ownership rate in 51 years. That's all after Obama. The media never told you the truth about that. They don't give a rip, obviously. The president was right. Do they want to make America great again? Do they ever talk about solutions, helping the American people, answers to our problems? Do they ever care about the people that voted for the president, that want to drain the swamp and sewer that is not only D.C., but it's also the media? Do they want real change that will impact people's lives in a positive way? So as the president said last night, they obviously don't care about making America great again. They never talk about solutions. Instead, they tear down, they delegitimize, and they want to destroy the president you voted for. Why? They don't want to help the American people after decades and decades of neglect from out of touch, power hungry politicians in Washington. That's who they are. Well, they're getting worse every day, and I don't think it's going to get better. But here's what we will do we will continue to expose them and their agenda every night, right here on this program, and we do thank you for being with us.